Dun, 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 dun. Is that is that the um uh, kind of like the background music or the iconic music from Star Wars? Dun, no, dun. That's, that's that's Star Trek. The Star Trek? Yeah. Oh. Today's Star Trek day. No, it's not. Well, today is the first Tuesday of the month, right? It is though. So today is May fourth. There you and go. And I'm your co-host. I don't know why the co-host is introducing the host. I know. Why? Why are you doing that? Anyways, <laughs> welcome back, guys, for another episode of the Daily Show. Happy Tuesday, because my episode's on Tuesday. Joe, happy Tuesday, Joe, my co-host. Super Tuesday. I feel super. I feel starry. A little bit belated happy anniversary to our daily show because yes. this month oh, is the uh, anniversary the first year first anniversary of the daily show yay you know what that calls for right a cake a cake where's my daily show cake we should get a yeah that's right huh we should get like a, a daily show cake well who knows maybe um liz already had it because her episode is like first episode of the week so I don't know if Liz would have a cake already. <laughs> anyway, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary thank and happy for, Tuesday. Thank you guys for being here from the beginning. Definitely, from yes. To now, and we will continue putting out more videos for you guys. Content okay? as much as we can. All right. There we so go. I feel good. It's anniversary. Let's start the show. Well, I would, I would hope that you would feel better because mm. uh, we got a lot of uh, awesome things to talk about. All right. What are we going to talk about? Today? today we'll talk about Star Wars. Stop. I was trying to do the. Uh, the iconic music, but oh, I'm not good at it. Music, no. The theme music, all right. Yeah, um, firefighters okay. and teachers, we're gonna talk about them. Okay. And then we'll talk about the national symbols of Mexico. Or if you guys saw you Liz's virtual travel, Ooh. yeah. Oh, well, more like an educational trip because we're Just gonna talk time about. Just for Cinco de Mayo, really. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, right? I, you know what? I have a feeling. Uh, I think so. I, I, she, that she, Liz, chose, she chose Mexico because Liz didn't mom. randomly pick no, Mexico no, 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 for no. this week. She, she <laughs> randomly, I don't think quote so. Quote unquote. Quote unquote. It was another time she picked another uh, country that we visited. It was tied to oh Is Ireland it? and St. Patrick's Day. There you go. See, I know, we, we know what you're doing, Liz. We, we know, Liz. We know, we know. So <laughs> but it's okay because it yes. works out. It works out, right? Um, and lastly, our stuff of the day, we are going to discuss things that start with the letter P We're now. Almost done with the alphabet, huh? Yes, almost there. I wonder what's going to be my next theme after the alphabet. You but. know, letter P is like one of the longest letter. Really? Like a, B, C, D, right? M, N, N, O, P. <laughs> M, N, N, O, P. No. <laughs> you know what? 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 Okay, before we even start, okay, go ahead. Alphabet, you know there's two N's in the alphabet? Really? Yeah. M N O P and X Y N Z. X Y N Z. <laughs> it's N. No, it's N Z. N Z. Oh man. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and start right. our today's observances. Stay. You guys should know Duh. this now. There Zip. we go. Yes. Be with you and you and us. And me. There you go. I want to control the force. I want to push it away from me. But you know, the force actually is able to kind of like pull you towards the uh, the towards Jedi too. Right? Yeah. Or whoever has the Master of Force. There's a light side, there's a dark side, you can be a Jedi, you can be a Sith Lord. You there know, you today is Star Wars. It's a... In a galaxy far, far away. away. Here we go. Uh, May 4th is, is dubbed tell to be me, me. May the 4th. Be that with you. Sense. There you go. That's why it's called Star Wars Day. That's our first observance. Mm -hmm. And if you guys by any chance do not know what Star Wars is, it's, it's a war in the stars. <laughs> it's a very, how do you say it? It's kind of like a modern day epic. Modern day epic, yeah. yeah uh -huh. Before back then we were talking about in ships, wars, but now we're talking about the ship is not on water, the ship is in space. Yes. Yeah. Instead of swords, we have light swords. It's, it's, it, well, we use light swords to fight. Th that's true, but general term would be a film series. We use light swords to fight. What? Lightsaber, dude. Yeah, I know. How come you, didn't, you didn't correct me. I said light sword. He didn't correct me. Oh, you let it go. Well, it is. Wars, it is technically a sword. I don't want to. A, sa a saber. A saber. A saber <laughs> is a sword. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah, but that's not the right term. That's true because, like, uh, I think the, one of the enemies also have like a like a dual blade thing, and so it's not a sword anymore, right? This but it is, is a saber still. This picture is wrong. Why? Luke has a green lightsaber. Really? Yeah. He's a green lightsaber, not a, a blue one. A blue one is Obi-Wan. Oh, well, maybe he borrowed it from Obi-Wan. No, he has his own lightsaber. I know he does. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. 
All right, anyways, May 4th was chosen as the date of the Star Wars because, you know, the phrase, it really rhymes or it really sounds like that. Yes, it sounds, uh, it's a... Uh, May the 4th, May the 4th, right there. So, a little bit more information, which I believe you already know if you are a big fan of Star Wars, is that Star Wars Day came with the rise of the internet and was a grass grassroots creation from fans. So, fans came out today. Yes, okay. uh-huh. Uh, in 2008, the first Facebook group uh, appeared for Luke Skywalker Day. Uh, it took place on May 4th and the phrase was May the 4th be with you. Right, Just right, like I this remember. iconic phrase now. Remember, yeah. You got Facebook in 2008? I had in 2006. I was the first... Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, really? Okay. Right. <laughs> the other thing is, like Star Wars, right? It crosses through so many generations. You have people in the 70s and watch it as a kid. Of course, the original trilogy, right? The original trilogy. I was a kid when I watched the prequels. Mm -hmm. Phantom Menace. Uh, the Brand of Vengeance, the Clone Wars. So, wait. so, so, so it's Phantom Menace, Clone Wars, and the Return of the Sith. That's when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And we have future generation of kids nowadays that watch the sequel, which is Force Awakens. For the rest, <laughs> uh, the Last Jedi would be the the, the last, last one. Jedi and the Rise of the Skywalker. The Rise of the Skywalker. So that's the that's the oh, no, sequel. No, the Force Awakens, the Rise of the Jedi, the Last Skywalker. Did I, did I say that right? Correct me Correct. in the uh, comment comment section if uh, if ever. And in the seventies, we had the original episodes. Episodes. Yes. Those are actually the. What is it called? It's not. It's a. It's not a prequel. It's not a sequel. It's just the main. What's, I don't know what that's word it's called. But whatever. The original trilogy. The original trilogy. That's the original trilogy. Yeah. So you but have... it's but but as far as the timeline is concerned, it's the fourth episode. Right. Yeah. So what is it called? What's the first episode? Uh, first, uh, fourth episode called the original trilogy. Uh, uh, a new hope. A new hope. Empire uh, Strikes Empire Back. Empire Strikes Back and. Uh, uh, Return of the Jedi. There you go. Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Good. 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 Yeah. Yeah? Oh, no. <laughs> Did we do some, good? Someone else will correct us. Someone yeah. will correct us. Please do correct us if we yeah. uh, make any mistakes. Um, but I'm going to admit myself that I'm not really that huge of a fan of Star Wars. Oh, get away. But, no. but, go away. <laughs> go but away, he, here's the thing. I have my fair share of being amazed uh, in its cinematic universe. Right, it's just right. like... It's a crafted story with a good world. And w w when I say universe, it, literally a universe. You know, like galaxies and stuff like the worlds. You know, when you say... Uh, how do you say it? Well, to be fair, <laughs> when you say Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? It's, MCU. It, it also covers other galaxies yes. and planets and stuff. Yes. So Star Wars is, is the same. Yes. But what makes it really interesting for me is the way they delivered the uh, the, the film series. Yeah, like how, they, like you know, everyone knows this. They started from episode four, five, and six. Right. It, the underdog fighting against a huge empire. Yes. Like uh -huh. a good, feel good story. And then the fact that uh, if you look at it in general term, you know, the Sith's bad guys, Jedi's good guys. But it doesn't mean that Jedi's are not making any mistakes. No, 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 right? no, no, no. Sometimes so, if you're too good, you forget what's... That's yes, uh, it, it's it, the movie basically uh, kind of um, emphasized the balance between good and evil. Right, right. So anything that's too much is not good. Even like no. you know, like too good is not good. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. That's why it's pretty. Yeah, it's a good story to learn. It's a and I, I know a lot of our students uh, who are like the biggest, biggest fans of, of this movie. So um, I appreciate sure one of our movies uh, with our, S definitely. One of friends is, has a crush on Harrison Ford. Yes, there you go. Mr. Han Solo. Han Solo, right? I think her name is Carrie Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Uh, even, even if you are a fan or not a fan of Star Wars, hey, man, I mean, you know, you can celebrate this um, observance by what? Just watching uh, your favorite... If, if you're a big fan, then favorite uh, Star Wars... Uh, how do you say it? Movie, episode? Shows, yeah. Episode. If not, maybe this is a good time for you to uh, try, it try it out and be uh, uh, to learn what's going on right, right, and uh, right. film see series. Why, see why this, uh, this has such fandom mm -hmm. over this culturally, uh, what do you call it? It's a cultural phenomenon, really. Yes. It took over there. the world. I mean, to have nine movies 
under the same franchise. Nine movies in the main line. In the main line, there There's you go. There's so many more <laughs> offshoot movies of the Star Wars. It's universe. like no, no, it's it, no, it's like the movie yeah, Fast Games too. Yeah, but it's it's like the movie Fast and the Furious because oh, yeah. they're reaching the ninth, their ninth sequel Fast now too. Nine. Yeah, right. Well, and they're probably funny, gonna go to space. <laughs> I heard too. a funny joke where uh, you know how it's Fast Nine, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, the tenth movie would be Fast Ten. Your seatbelt. That you know what that's that, that's. <laughs> I, I saw that joke. I was like, that's so it, it takes them ten movies to uh, promote safety in driving. Fast in your seatbelt. <laughs> oh, well, that's just necessary. Maybe there's a fast appearance. I don't probably. Know, probably yeah. Oh, here's another thing about Star Wars. Uh, I believe Ian mm. uh, hated the last three. Uh, Episodes. Yeah, he doesn't like the, uh, the sequel trilogy. Yeah, yeah the, the the latest sequel uh, trilogy. You know, seven, eight, and nine. He, was, he wasn't a big fan of it. Every time, yeah, we talk about Star Wars, or yeah. even you guys, you know, talk about yeah. Star Wars in Zoom. Yeah. Uh, he's he he doesn't like it. You he get visibly mad. <laughs> but which I think is oh, it, it's pretty common for a movie to extend. Like if a movie with the same story, should I say same story, same universe? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Within the same universe, you kind of extend it to uh, more episodes or more sequels. It, it it is bound to happen, unfortunately. Yeah, you, right? you run out of stories, or sometimes the story repeats itself, and it's just not as great of, as. Yeah, of course, the more movie you uh, you make for a specific universe, mm. uh, the, the more uh, the higher the chance of you to repeat. To yeah, and to not uh, make uh, such a good episode. If you let's say, for example, episodes four, five, and six, right? Of I mean, course, they're the best ones. A, a lot of people will say they're the best ones. More nostalgic factor. Yes. Yes. And then so, came uh, came uh, episodes one, two, and three. Now the episodes one, two, and three were compared to the original one, and uh, back that they, time. Back then, when I was growing up, when I watched the the, the, the the prequel came out, right, one, three, right, Phantom Menace, people didn't like it. Uh, exactly. Now people this people new one it. came out, and people love the prequel. <laughs> yes. They, so. they love Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, it, you know, it, it happens. changes. Feeling changes over the years. You start to remember not the movies. It's just really the childhood that wrap around yeah. the movies. Yeah, that's what really brings you back. And people, when they think about May the Fourth, right? It's, it's not just about the franchise, the Star mm -hmm. Wars franchise. It's most about how it brings people together. They're, yes. They remember yeah. the time where they were happy, they're, they're wide eyed, they enjoy the movie. Exactly. The they, same emotions uh, you evoke with like, your friends while wa while watching it. You feel young again. Yes, there you go. So, you guys, you like Star Wars, right? Enjoy the day, watch your favorite movies, and, you know. May the Force be with you guys. There you go. Oh, by the way, tell us, what's your favorite um, Star Wars movie or Star Wars episode? Let us know, you know, yeah. or even a game. Maybe if you're playing a Star Wars game. Video games, yeah, absolutely. So, there you go. Okay. So, Force. And speaking of Force, do you know how scary the Force of Nature is? Yes, yeah, do. When you're like fighting ships and your ship is on fire, you need someone to put out the yes. fire, Yes, right? specifically brush fires. Oh. Yes, or forest fires. So how do we get rid of these fires? We need someone to fight these fires, right? Yes, here? fight the fires. You know, Who's but we, gonna fight the fires? We don't us. need the Jedi's to do that, though. No, the Jedi probably cause the fire because they're so <laughs> what? fire. So what fight these fires, yeah? The Whoa. firefighters, Whoa. our brave firefighters, International Firefighters Day is our second observance. Mm -hmm. And this day was first held on May 4th, of course, mm -hmm. together with the Jedi's. In 1999, though. <laughs> 1999. They're putting out the fires that the Jedi caused. <laughs> <laughs> well, May 4th was chosen because St. Florian is the patron saint of firefighters. Oh. And the feast day of St. Florian, known as the Sa as St. Florian's Day, takes place on the date. Uh, St. Florian's Day uh, was or saint florian rather was one of the first uh commanders of the firefighting squad in the roman empire wow. it, go, it dates back to always the roman empire back to the roman empire yeah the fire existed way before that but we have well they <laughs> yeah. the thing is they don't have any fire trucks yeah no that time they probably had like horse carriage with water with water buckets or buckets water. So th that just goes to show you uh, the long history of uh, people trying to prevent fire. Yeah, you know? awareness, how the fire is. Yes, there yeah. you go. Um, International Firefighters Day can be considered to be a separate holiday from St. Florence Day, mm. but it can also be known as St. Florence Day. You know, to celebrate Firefighters Day, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's better for us to lessen the work for these brave individuals, right? Mm -hmm. So we should be careful 
around fire, not starting to fire. Exactly. Like, yeah. Fire is dangerous, it's destructive, and it puts the life of these brave heroes in danger as well too. So right. we, we can do anything to prevent fire, right? It's much better. Because they prefer, even though they their job is to fight fighters, right? They mm -hmm. want to prevent fires. There you go, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh, definitely. Yeah. So it says International Firefighters Day because not only uh, we celebrated uh, this observance here in the U.S., but also in other countries too. Right. Uh, for example, in Europe, International Firefighters Day is also known as the Day of Fire Service. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just kind of a uh, minor renaming, but it's pretty much the same essence. Yes, yes. Um, and when it comes to firefighters, of course, uh, firefighters protect life and property, risking their own lives mm -hmm. as they do so. Some volunteer uh, many hours of their time to the work, while others dedicate their lives to it as a career. I remember the history of firefighter where firefighters will only put out the fire of houses that has the little emblem mark that says this house is protected by firefighters. Oh really? Yeah, so, so if a house is on fire and it doesn't have a little symbol that it's protected by firefighters, they're not going to put out the fire. Oh. But then people realize that's not right. That's not right. Yeah, that's not right. So they took down that and firefighters would fight any fire. There we go. And not only do they fight fires, they're they're like uh, they help you for like emergency too. That's true. Yeah, if you guys notice, uh, there's someone calling out uh, probably like nine one one, right? There's going to be a fire truck yeah. coming. And not only that, besides fighting fires, right? Uh, fires, right? They do uh, community service too. That helps, like yes, they your, are. Your, your cat or dog stuck in a tree, mm -hmm. they get a ladder. You know that kind of like a uh, scene, right? Yes. So they do more than just fight fires. So they're very uh, versatile. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the fact that they risk their own lives to uh, to uh, keep other people safe already mm -hmm. is, is more than enough. But of course, they do more than that. Oh, so there you go. So on International Firefighters Day, the uh, sacrifices of firefighters to keep the community safe are honored and recognized uh, all around the world right. or all over the world. So I have a question for you guys, right? What type of dog is usually associated with firefighters? Oh, comments, okay. Okay, that's comments. interesting. I We used to have a dog like that. So for a uh, policeman, right? Their dogs are usually uh, German Shepherd. German Shepherd, yes. For a firefighter, they have a distinct dog that you probably know. Mm -hmm. So put in the comments so you guys can guess it. There you go. So anyways, and uh, additionally to uh -huh. uh, what Joe said, do you have, do you know anyone, maybe a friend or a family member who is a firefighter? Uh, so for today, if you do, uh, try thanking them yeah. for putting their lives first uh, before, Absolutely. you know, for, for our safety. So. so I do have, oh, I remember when um, I was in uh, the mountainous region of our, uh, uh, our state, right? Okay. There was a huge fire and I saw like around oh. 20 fire trucks going up to put out the brush fire. That's true. Fire. Yeah. And I, I live, I'm lucky because I live around 200 feet from a fire station. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. So it's really. I mean, if ever res response is going to be uh, quite fast. But I'd rather not have them come. Of course. Yeah. yeah. It's good that they're there. But it's, it's like you're thankful for doctors, but you would rather yes. stay healthy. Exactly. exactly. Right? right. Instead of keep going to the hospital. Prevention is the best solution. And here in California, brush fires are very common, and unfortunately, you know. Uh, it never misses a year. Every year, there's gonna be a brush fire somewhere here in California. And we're in a uh, drought right now too, so the water supply is not yes. great. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, I mean, like the 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 areas these uh, flames covers Dry, just low humidity. And it's it's Bear quite a big it's quite a big area, and sometimes they don't even can reach it. I mean, it could last for months. Yeah. The the brush fires we're talking about here. Imagine these guys. Uh, Fighting, fighting it for months, you know? No, that's exhausting. So yeah, uh, firefighters, thank you so much for your service and uh, keeping us safe. Absolutely. And be safe out there too, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, remember. I think they're already safe from uh, from the virus because they're already wearing masks. Oh yeah, they have the... The, the oxygen mask. Yes. There you go. Oh wait, I'm sorry, it kind of cut you off when <laughs> you were going to say something. I was going to say the best thing we can do is just uh, be safe around fire and just prevent fire itself. Try, yeah, try our best, you know. Right, so... And yeah, so we talked about the firefighters. Uh, Another part of the community service. that's very, very important in our community is teachers. Yes, people who are responsible for... Educating. Educating, young, you young know. Ladies. Not just passing the knowledge, educating too. There's, right. you know... It, about life, not just about like... Yes, subjects. not just your uh, academic, mm. but basically 
inspire you to become a better person uh, overall. I feel like you know? the best, the best, like we're not, we're not Jedi's, we're not, we're not the Force. But the best thing that is power for us is knowledge. But thank you for uh, saying that because you can say like, for example, Obi Wan is uh, Anakin's uh, teacher, right? Yes. Star Wars, right? So he's uh, and Anakin is a pupil, he's a Padawan. There you go, he's a student. Would you say would you say uh, Obi Wan uh, was a good teacher? Oh uh, yes. B even though Anakin turned into Darth Vader. <gasps> Spoiler, but you guys already know that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, I know that. Already. No, he was a great teacher. Yeah. He he did it all he can for Anakin, but sometimes. Mm -hmm. But see, the, the, Anakin is an uh, individual. Yeah, but but see, the thing is, sometimes uh, the students uh, perform. Well, yeah, students' performance or the students uh, exceed the master. Too. Yeah, but what I was gonna say, uh, usually or a lot of times, uh -huh. whatever the stu uh, the student does, uh -huh. uh, is being unconsciously reflected to the teacher. Right, right. You it's know, like which teachers like cloning themselves. Right. Yeah, uh -huh. it's kind of like cloning. So if if the if the student excels, then uh, you know such pride that the teacher. Sure. Uh, but on the contrary, if the uh, student uh, didn't become a uh, success. Or well, I mean, if, if the student um, didn't, how do I say it? Like, uh, turn out to be... Upstanding citizen. Yes, there you go. Okay. Uh, also, the teacher would kind of uh, feel the blame too. Like, oh, yes, I guess uh, I wasn't able to actually, you know, help this change student. The yes, there you go. It weighs heavily. So it goes both ways. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Anyways, for today, National Teacher Day. So uh, for now, this observance is here in the U.S. Uh, it pays tribute to American educators. Absolutely. It is sponsored by the uh, National Education Association or NEA uh -huh. and it's part of the Teacher Appreciation Week. What's so don't thing? worry guys because for the whole week it's uh, Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, on this day, um, everyone basically uh, give thanks to their teachers and um, you know to, uh, for for contributing you know knowledge sharing knowledge and educating people in the community students. Um, the roots of the day go back to 1944 when Maddie White Woodridge, a teacher from Helena, Arkansas, uh, and later principal at Helena's North End School, oh, she got promoted. Yes, uh, began a campaign to start a national day for teachers. She started correspondence with uh, political and education leaders around the United States. At some point, she wrote to Eleanor Roosevelt. Sounds familiar? Yes. Uh, the first lady. Yes, there you go. Who helped take up her cost and had a hand in convincing Congress to pass a joint resolution to uh, create the day. Mm. There you go. So anyways, again, going back to the teacher, it's yeah, uh, maybe a lot of people will think, oh, teaching is easy, you know. But if you're just like any other career or profession, if you're taking it seriously, it's never easy, you know. Yeah. Some of the things. First, as someone who shares knowledge and information, teachers have to make sure what they're teaching is accurate. Right. Yes, okay. is correct. Thing. Yes. I mean, that's why here in the show, uh, well, of course, given that everyone is just human, mm -hmm. uh, every one of us, we make six, mistakes. Times, yeah. yeah. But the thing is, if you notice that mistake, you have to acknowledge it and correct it right away right. to avoid further uh, misinformation. Right. Or... It's, it's, about, it's not about being humiliated or anything getting it wrong. No, it's about... no. Finding what's wrong and fixing it and growing from that. That's true. You know what? Before, um, I I'm kind of uh, not comfortable admitting mistakes. You oh, know, yeah. I feel like it's uh, it's kind of like a reflection of your own failure. You don't want that to be out in the world. Exactly. But then I, later on, I just realized that it's better to admit it because it's it's also helping other people. Right. You know that. Uh, getting a more uh, what do you call this more more accurate information nice. specifically for scientists they will find out this right. uh, in, in one in one year and then the following year maybe it's gonna change because they learn something new because learning is constant learning is it's not like oh yeah I graduated school I know everything you know it's it, that doesn't work <laughs> like that even if you go out of the school even if you don't meet with your teachers anymore you still learn things I mean, you know we as human we existed for a long time we have our own bodies and we still don't know the ins and outs of it that's true and yeah we still have a lot to learn and knowledge is something that is more valuable than 
mining action. That's right. Well, it's it's definitely true when, uh, about the phrase "knowledge is power" because it, it's we're not talking about a physical power, but the power to actually change something. Yes. You know, I mean, the reason as humans lasted this long for to forever is because because of the knowledge. You know, we learned uh, how to adapt to things. We learned what you eat that's good for you and that's bad for you. We learned how how to hunt. You know, exactly. back in the day. Uh, dangerous animals. How to, which animals to avoid? How to prevent fire. And those knowledge, those knowledge is passed down to the next generation. You know, good knowledge. Good knowledge. There you go. So, uh, yes, definitely. Um, and then, also as a teacher, one should love educating students. You cannot just like go to a classroom on your typical uh, uh, school settings, I guess. Go to a classroom and tell people, or, or tell your students, all right, uh, turn your uh, book to page three and all. I don't like I, those teachers. I, like I know, right? <laughs> if the teacher doesn't interact with you, you're just like. You have to be engaged as a it's teacher. Just like watching a video. Exactly. He's so like, minus. And, and, and apparently, some people would complain that, oh, oh we're getting, uh, what do you call this? We're, uh, computers are, are taking over our job. Well, I mean, that's the problem. You got to be more you got to be more engaged, you, engage, you know. Interact. You can't just as a teacher, you can just go to a classroom and tell yeah, them to open the book this. and stuff. No, that's not like that. If I have those kind of teachers, I'll take another class. Yeah, and, and when you say engage, not just, you know, like encourage them, but also Don't ask questions. Just ask questions with questions. Mm -hmm. You know, ask a question that actually turns the gears in their head. Yes, exactly. Ask simple true false question. That does nothing. As a teacher, try to ask questions outside the book. You have to make the student hungry for knowledge. That's true. And of course, uh, it's only going to happen if uh, these students get interested in the subject. Cool. And how do you make it interested? You got to make it engaging. You have to cater to the student. You know what the student like and how they want the information being presented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a changing task. I guess it's safe to say that being a teacher uh, could also be an entertainer. Yes, you know, absolutely. I mean, an entertainer as in not an actor, but like you entertain the knowledge or you make the students be entertaining the knowledge and kind of be hungry on I mean, I about learned, it, right? I learned all my, when I was a kid, right? The most entertaining things was like Bill Nye, that's how I learned science. Exactly, right there, it's Bill Nye the science guy, right? You make it interesting. They were making raps <laughs> for... <laughs> It for works. like uh, it works. It works. chemical songs and stuff, pretty awesome, right? Yeah. Compare that to all right, open your uh, uh, chemistry book, or go to uh, page fifty, and uh, yeah, you're gonna have quiz later on. I'm gonna sleep in class if you, you do that. Right yeah. there, you go. Okay, so those are our uh, observances for today. But for starting this um, episode, starting this month for my episode, I'm uh, adding some additional notable observances because a lot of you know each day there's going to be a lot and uh, sometimes we kind of limit our uh observances so to three just, uh, it's like rapid fire we kind of yeah well we, we don't have to talk about it uh, too long yes so anyways we got bird day you know for birds what's your favorite bird uh chicken <laughs> that's my favorite bird oh turkey i like, I like the flamingo because they're pink and sand on one leg oh I okay like <laughs> Uh, okay, so the next one we got the kind day. Now, kind, as you can see, it has a uh, dot. You know, it's so, an acronym. No, it's not an acronym. It's an initialism. Oh, initial. Yeah, yeah. Acronym, I'm sorry. Acronym is when they have a period, but you can pronounce the word. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, wait, you can pronounce the word. It's kind. <laughs> but it it doesn't mean the 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 literal oh, word yeah. kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually means. It's an acronym. Yeah. It. it, it means for oh, for this kind day teach me <laughs> well for this kind day it actually means kids in need of diapers right. there you go like, you provide the diapers you be kind <laughs> there's charitable organization that helps uh struggling families to you know mm -hmm. find them with necessities such as diapers there you go right so people sometimes they have uh child or baby that they're not ready for and they need a little bit of help to sustain to start their family and some people don't have the financial uh, stabilities to afford diapers because diapers yeah. are expensive they're expensive they're, they're disposable so you gotta keep buying them that's why i never grew up uh in diapers you just go anywhere you no go. we got the cloth oh yeah yeah it's the cloth the washable cloth, cloth. so <laughs> i don't know what joe was thinking i mean 
Anyways. I was potty trained when I was one year old. Wow, no, so God. smart. <laughs> okay, um, the third one, National Orange Juice Day. Pretty Love easy, orange come juice. on, orange yeah. juice. And then the fourth one, poem on your pillow day. Ooh. I don't know what that means. So you just uh, you have you have a poem on your pillow. Would you write it on your pillow? Well, hopefully not. Oh, Maybe just have a piece of paper, put it on your pillow. I can write my poem on my pillow. Unless your your pillow cover is a poem itself. See, that would be cool. One sheep, two sheep. Yo, yeah, oh, speaking of which, four no, 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 speaking, uh, speaking of which, <laughs> have you have you done this before when you have a test? Uh, the next day, or if you have a quiz the next day at your school, you kind of uh, get your book under your pillow oh, and learn through <laughs> osmosis. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't, doesn't work. work. I'm a I'm a Suspicious. living testimony You're on that one because it never worked. I failed twice <laughs> on, on those quizzes. You know, when it comes to the exam, right? I don't sleep actually. Oh, well, you I should don't. sleep because you need to. You should. Absolutely. You need, yeah, you need to. Uh, uh, what do you call this? Uh, you, you need to get rest your mind, mind ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you and go. it's true because when you rest your mind, your memory is stored. It's way better. Way better. Yeah. Than you are when you're wide awake doing all nighters or the next day. Not good. We'll do it. And then lastly, we have World Give Day. There give you go. me. Give me money. I can give you a memory for the laptop right there. Help me remember my stuff. <laughs> yeah, help you remember your stuff. <laughs> So those are our um, observances, and if you guys couldn't uh, celebrate any of the major ones, uh, we got these notable ones, so yeah. maybe you guys can do it. Pick and choose what you like. There you go. Alright, moving on to Day in History. What happened on May 4th? I just realized, <laughs> Yes. with all the observances, it's already half an hour. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just realized that. Anyways. Today in history, 1966, we got Willie Mays breaks a uh, National League home run record. Is this playing basketball? No. A home run is a score in basketball. No, it's not. Is it golf? It's not golf. You're getting closer. You have to hold on to something. Tennis. No, almost there. Almost you know what? I'm just going to spoil it to you. Baseball, Joe. Oh, baseball. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So today in 1966, San Francisco Giants outfielder Willie Mays hits a hits his 512th career home run what? to break Mel Ott's National League record for home runs throughout his career. 512 home runs. That's amazing. That's amazing, right? <laughs> Mays would finish his career with uh, 660 home runs. He added more to his career. Yeah, well, I mean, he wasn't retired that time, oh, you know. Wow. Uh, but this is the day when he breaks the National League home run record. Uh, That's so why. on May 4th, 1966, he got 112, mm -hmm. which, was the, which broke the previous record. Oh, yes. Then before he retired, he was matching uh, overall in, total. in overall, his career. 660. How good is this guy right here? I mean, I can do that. It's easy. I do it. Yeah, if you're talking about Wii Sports, <laughs> so yeah. No, I'm not even good at that too. <laughs> In addition to winning the National League MVP in 1954 and 1965, yeah, Mace played in 24 All-Star games, winning the All-Star MVP in 1963 and 1968. All-Star games are really fun to watch because you get the best of the best playing against each other. Yes, yes, uh-huh. And if he wins two of them, that's, hey, that's something on my record that I want. Speaking of baseball, would you say baseball is a, is he, is a heavily team sports yeah, um, of type of... Uh, no, no, because like if you're, I mean, compared to basketball, because when you say basketball, uh, you know, team play is really essential. You know, you gotta, like, even if you're moving, you gotta know that your other teams are moving too. Yeah, but the thing is, like, you have more uh, roles in baseball. You have the pitcher. That's true. The That's action. true. Okay. Same thing with basketball. Most of the basketball, you just have, like, a, a point. Mm hmm. You want to shoot the most, but in baseball, you need a lot more components. You have people in the outfit that know how to catch. Right, right. You gotta have a pitcher that can throw a little pass or like trick balls, right? Yeah, and also try uh, as a player, uh, in, uh, as a baseball player, right. you'll have to know how to read the ball, you know, when you say read the ball, like if, if, if you it's think. A fastball, is it curveball? If you're gonna hit it, and then right. if they, if your uh, you opponent want, team. Want you have to signal to your team. Like, yes. You're gonna bunt this, you better start running. Mm -hmm. So it is a team. Yeah. Well, it is so it team. is also heavily. Uh, uh, relying on teamwork. Relying on teamwork. Yes. That's yes. Awesome. I mean, most sports. Is. The, only, the only sports that's not relying on teams is probably tennis. It's the sole person. Oh, no, I disagree. Uh, well, if you if you're you play doubles, doubles. Yeah, I'm not of course. Yeah. Oh, well. 
I mean, it <laughs> cannot uh, be golf, a team if it's uh, singles. Uh, golf, golf is a single person. Yes, there you go. Right. All right, additionally, uh, he was also elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1979. Of course, come on. With that record, record come on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, his base running, power, a fielding ability to hit for average, and outstanding arm in the outfield uh, made him the prototype five tool player. Because very versatile. See that? Yeah, because the so thing, talented. the thing about some of the team sports. Well, let's talk some about people baseball. Just, like, good at pitching. Some people are just good at hitting. Exactly. Because you can, you can, he is. you can trade. Well, not trade, but you can uh, swap him out. Yes, like if yes. you have a good pitcher, you just put him on the. If you guys are pitching. He's a good substitute. Yes, he's like ace of ace. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a jack of all trade. Or ace of base ball. Ace of base ball. Ball. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's a prototype five tool player uh, for whom baseball scouts search. I mean, people who are like, there was like triple threat. He's like, what's five? Petal triple threat. He's yeah. Triple threat. <laughs> so uh, he's got his name on top. Oh, there you go. Um, all right. So notable figure board today. We got Horace Mann. He's is a centaur. What? He's a horse and man. He's a half horse, half man. He's a centaur. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Horus. Oh, Horus man. Okay, my bad. I was, I was thinking that you will go for the Egyptian god, Horus. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Horus man in 1796. Now, he is an American educator. Teacher's Day. Teacher's Day. National Teacher's Day. Exactly. Author and editor who pioneered public schools here in the U.S. Uh, man is born in Franklin, Massachusetts. There you go. And uh, if you guys join us on uh, our Nick Knack No Trivia questions, uh, I guess a few days back, one of the questions was, uh, w where was the first public school here in the U.S.? Franklin, Massachusetts. Well, it's in Boston, but still. Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah, but it's still same state, Massachusetts, yes. right? Same state, yeah. So Horace Mann has something to do with it. You know, he kind of pushed uh, this idea of education should be for everyone. It was one of the University in Massachusetts. I don't know. MIT, Massachusetts. Oh yes, yes. Oh, how did I forget? Yeah, and I always uh, yeah, see the Boston commercial Dynamic, for that. Boston there we go. Well, good in mm -hmm. So, if you guys are planning to uh, go back to school, Massachusetts. <laughs> you want to go MIT? I'll go. Oh, let's go MIT. We study together. I don't think I have a. Uh, I'll, I'll help you study. I'll put books in your under your pillow for you. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're going to the place of the week, which is Mexico. Mexico, south of the border. Yes, and neighbor. for yes, and for today, uh, we're talking about. Of course, I always talk about the national symbols. The only difference today, though, is we're gonna stick to the animals. Animals. Yes. Yeah. They, apparently, Mexico has a lot of uh, uh, national animals. They even have a national dog. Really? Yes. Yeah, so wow. pretty awesome, right? Usually, wow, 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 wow. as a country, you're gonna have one national animal on, on land and then one national, uh, like national bird, uh -huh. something yeah, like that. Land, you have your sky, you have water. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about the national symbols, animal symbols in Mexico. How come no no, no country has like their national space animal? So weird. Space animal. Yeah, space animal. I know Russia has a. Uh, Oh, I forgot! I forgot the uh, name of the dog. Oh man! Laika. La, la, la. Laika. There you go. Laika. Yes. Laika was the name. Space of, yeah. dog. The space dog. There you go. All right. So let's talk about uh, Mexico's national animal in general, or mammal. Well, there's gonna be another mammal, uh, the uh, jaguar. So, and you guys should already know. So when I was reading about like uh, Mexico's <clears throat> history, right? Back then, there were warriors were dressed. Jaguars. Yes. Yeah. They were very fierce. They were very scary. You see uh, a fighter, a Mexican fighter wearing a jaguar in uh, ancient time, you'd be scared. You too. know who I see as a, a, a in w when I see a jaguar? <laughs> you know who I remember? Oh. Uh, King from uh, Tekken. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he has a, a jaguar. Tiger body and uh, human body. Like. Well, he, he is human, but he just had a mask of a uh, jaguar. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. All right, their national bird though is a golden eagle. It's on the flag too. Yes, which is uh, found in the flag of Mexico. Right, it's grabbing on a <clears throat> snake. Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then the national reptile, Ooh. green turtle. I like turtles. I like turtles too, especially uh, if uh, if they're ninjas. 
but that's New York. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> so that uh, Mex uh, green turtle is Mexico's national said, reptile. But you said we have a national dog, right? Nas national. Not dog. we, but Mexico has national dog, and it's going to be oh, this one. I'm not gonna pronounce that. Good luck. It's Choloitz Quintley. Oh. Choloitz Quintley. This ah. dog looks like. It's a breed of hairless dog. Yeah, it's hairless. It yes, is. there you go. Um, if you think it's kind of hard to pronounce, just like Joe said, uh, you can just, you know... Uh, show Lutz Quintly. Well, Show Lloyd's Quintly. Show Lutz Quintly. But if it's too hard for you, don't worry, because you can call this breed of dog Sholo. Sholo. There you go, Sholo. So, apparently, Sholos have been around for at least 3,000 years. Mm. Archaeological evidence suggests they accompanied their, the first humans to cross the Bering Strait, um, then lived in jungles of Mexico, where they uh, were prized by ancient cultures. So, when they went with the humans in the Bering Strait, you were talking about from uh, Alaska all the way up north. Cause that's where the Bering Strait is. Yes. So basically, when you guys think of Bering Strait, right? Think of uh, like a little uh, path from Russia to Alaska. It's connected to the continent. Mm -hmm. That's where early people walk across. To yeah. To, to America. And by the way, by foot. By foot. By foot. Yeah. That's a that's a long distance travel. Talk about that. It is. There you go. Um, and then later, European colonizers, including Christopher Columbus, wrote about them uh, in their journals, describing them as strange, hairless dog. Because yeah, I, know. I guess they are used to seeing uh, dogs with fur back in the day. Uh, you know? Well, yeah, that's a standard dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, the standard cholo uh, can measure up to two feet tall uh, at the shoulder, while the miniature is typically uh, between a foot and a. Uh, Half a foot, or so, foot and a half, so rather. Sorry. So dogs are pretty small. They're, really, they're not big dogs. They're, no. They're small. They're so low to the ground. Mm-hmm. So low to the ground. No, 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 Joe. <laughs> and the toy is around a foot or less. Oh wow! The the toy, the miniature version of the dog. Is yes. Wow. Uh -huh. It's like a chihuahua, man. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh -huh. Another, another. But a I chihuahua see. has fur. Oh yeah. That's nah. All right. Um, since their skin produces protective oils, Sholos can get acne, uh, especially in their first year of life. <laughs> get, get that proactive acute yeah. <laughs> skin care. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're going to have a Sholo as a pet, uh, you gotta might be you might want to be aware of its uh, you know how to take care of its skin. Yeah. I mean, we take care of our skin. You do. So yeah, there you go. Uh, but the good rule of thumb is to keep the Sholo clean by wiping them down with a damp cloth and uh, remove dead skin cells and bathing of course you know uh, though bathing too frequently will strip the natural oils and could end up clogging the pores more yeah the oils help it uh, moisturize their skin it's a fancy dog gotta have some lotion on it <laughs> there you go so those are our national symbols for mexico I'm a, I'm a, I can say I'm generally a, a dog lover. I love dogs. Uh -huh. And I'm interested to uh, see uh, a Sholo in, in person. Hmm. We should go to, uh, go to Mexico for Cinco de Mayo then. Come there on. you go. For Let's tomorrow? Go. Let's go tomorrow. Well, we're gonna, we do have Zoom though, so we can't. Sorry. We can virtual travel to Mexico. Tra yeah, <laughs> virtual travel to Mexico. There we go. Alrighty. Stop of the day, guys. Letter P. Letter P, even though my script says letter L. Well, I never changed it. It. It, it. I never change it. All right, let's start. Animal of the day, pangolin. So pangolins are shy nocturnal mammals that are completely covered in plate-like scales. You guys can see it right there. Armadillo. Yes, yes, like a, but uh, this, the scale of a pangolin kind of, uh, how do you say? It? Flares up. Flares up, yes, mm -hmm. there you go. Because for an armadillo, it's kind of, it, it's, it's really attached to its body. It's, it's like a shell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So they can like fall off. Yes. Yeah. The majority. Oh, I remember Sandshrew. Oh my god. He's talking about Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> Sandshrew, the Pokemon. That, that's pretty awesome Pokemon. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> the majority of the population have never heard of the pangolin, uh, but they are the world's most trafficked animals. Really? Yes. Due to the high demand of their scales and meat. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, their meat is considered a delicacy, while uh, their scales are said to cure illness. And uh, yeah, we, we put it in a quote because it's not scientifically proven. But unfortunately, people believe believe it. Yeah, so that's one reason why they would uh, you know illegally called? take pangolins. You know what that's called when you take a medicine, you think it cures your ailment. It's called 
placebo. A placebo, yeah, yeah, a placebo, a placebo and effect. It starts with the letter P. <laughs> it's not an animal, though. I, I should I should have had it for uh, the word of the day, but spoiler alert, uh, placebo is not our word of the day. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, uh, speaking of their diet, pangolins are insectivores, uh, meaning they eat insects. Right. There you go. And like ants and termites. Oh, get rid of the termites. I'll, I'll, I'll buy pangolins to keep my house to get rid of the termites. Oh, man. I'll okay. Make, I'll make the orchid man. Just get like a insecticide. It is. There you go. Is it? No, it's not insecticide. It's an insectivore. No, I'm saying uh, if you don't have pangolin at home to get rid of termites, you know. Uh, Terminex. <laughs> but, you know. Uh, they are somewhat particular and tend to consume uh, only one or two species of insect. So even though they are insectivores, they don't eat any kinds of insects. They are, you know, just ants picky and termites. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, as far as their uh, lifespan is concerned, uh, it's unknown in the wild. However, in captivity, of the, uh, if they're captive, uh, taken care of, they could last as long as 20 years. So I am one and a half pangolin years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you're a pangolin. I'm a pangolin. I'm an old pangolin. And then next up we have the plant of the day. Pineapple. Oh. Piña. Colada. Piña colada. So we all know what a pineapple is, right? It's an apple with pine. No. Oh. Oh. What? No. Why is it? Why well, is there a cherry there? That's not oh yeah. Well, ignore the cherry. <laughs> okay, I thought okay. I was gonna cover it with my with our window, yeah. but it didn't. But what you might not know is that originally pineapple was a name used for pine cones, not this fruit. Right there, um, the first recorded mention of the word of the word pineapple dates back to 1398, um, when the tropical fruit was discovered in America. The Europeans named them pineapples because of the resemblance of what we know now as pine cones. It kind of does. Kind of resemble, right? It does, yeah. And here's another thing. Did you guys know that pineapple is neither? Neither of the two. Not a pine or not an apple. You know what? Go back to the pangolin. Because the pangolin kind of look like a pine, uh, pine cone too, huh? That's true. Well, because, yeah. Uh -huh. yes, yeah. And pine cone is such a letter P. Yes. <laughs> but I chose pineapple. Because it's one of my favorite fruit. And you can eat a pineapple. Yes. Uh, I tried eating a pine cone when I was But it's there. a surprise for me that it's not a pine and it's not an apple. And it just shows that us humans, how, how we name stuff, you know, uh, sometimes it doesn't uh, make any sense. It's a misnomer. <laughs> misnomer. It's a misnomer. There we go. Yeah. Uh, additional uh, information or trivia about pineapple is the world's largest pineapple ever recorded was in 2011, grown by Christine McCallum from Bakewell, Australia. How long is it? How big is it? Uh, it is measured uh, a little more than a foot long. Mm. Okay. 26 inches in girth and weighed 18 pounds. 18 and a quarter pounds. That wow. It's a heavy... Heavy pineapple. pineapple, definitely, right? i tell you something really cool. Uh, you know for pineapple, right? You can actually eat it without using a knife. Actually, really? Yeah. I never I never so, tried. I always of you see course. how you look at the pineapple, you see how it's sectioned off into like little like circles and rectangles, right? Mm -hmm. or like a hexagon? Yeah. You can actually uh, loosen it up and pull it out and eat it. Mmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Or, but people usually I don't know, uh, it's easier to just cut it. I'll just cut it. People usually cut it and usually have it uh, diced. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, uh, chunks. Pineapple chunks. chunks. There yeah. you go. Or a cord like this, like a, what do you call it? What's it? A circular. What's it called? Uh, pineapple rings. <laughs> yeah, rings. Pineapple rings. I'm blanking out right now. It's okay, but I, I it's one of my favorite fruit. Uh, but okay. the thing is, if I eat too much of a pineapple and then I drink water, the water tastes bitter. Oh. Wow. I don't know if you, that ex you no, experienced that. You're compensating. What does that mean? Because like you have too much flavor over the oh. so you know, flavor try to enhance and try to balance it out. Yeah. So that's why. That's why I don't. Uh, plus, it kind of uh, hurts my tongue if I eat too much pineapple. It kind of gets rough. One of my favorite games when I was a kid was <laughs> I, me and my brother would take pineapples and throw at each other. What? Oh, don't be like Joe and his brother wasting food. Come no, on. No, no, no. The what? Actual fruit we throw at each other. Yeah, but do you eat it afterwards? Okay, I thought you just you know, That's how we tenderize it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we were really troublemakers back then. Oh man. And up until now, guys. I'm still a troublemaker. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Musical art of the day. We got this song right here. Paper Roses by Marie Osmond Osman in 
1973. Paper Roses <laughs> is a popular song written and composed by Fred Spielman and Janice Torrey. Um, it was first. It was. It first was a top five hit in the 1960s by Anita Bryant, not not Marie Osmond. Yet. So this is a cover. It is a cover. Okay. Uh, Marie Osmond uh, recorded it in 1973 and took her version to number one on the U.S. country chart. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. So if you guys are wondering, uh, Marie is not the first uh, person who sang it. It was uh, Anita Bryant. Okay. Because most of the songs are like that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Upon reaching number one, Osmond became uh, less than one month after her 14th birthday. Yes, yeah, so she, she got famous on her before she became 14. Wow. The youngest female artist and the youngest overall solo artist to reach number one on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart. Doesn't she have a brother, Marie and... Uh, what's his name? Marie and something Osmond. I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, I don't know. Wait, let me let me research it for a bit. Sure. Well, you keep talking. And by the way, the record still stands as of 2015. So I mean, from what? From 1973 to 2015, that's a lot of years. Oh, yeah. And then in the United Kingdom, where Osmond Mania, <laughs> they they got an Osmond Mania there, was just as strong as uh, in the United States. Paper Roses. Climb all the way to number two, the UK singles chart. It's uh, Donnie Marie. Oh, Donnie is, Marie Osmond. Is he a singer too? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're almost there, guys. Word of the day: We got password. Hey, that's my password. <laughs> that's your, your password is password. Yeah. Oh, and then you just set oh, it no. here, and we're gonna no, upload no. it. You have to change it. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Anyways, password. Let me spell it for you. It's P. A S S W O R D. All right. It is a noun and it means a secret word or phrase that must be used to gain admissions to something. Now, uh, we have the second definition, which is a string of characters that allows access to a computer system or service. So, because back in the day, of course, with no computers, when you go uh, with a password, uh, it's easier for you if it makes sense. You know, because we <clears throat> live in a we live in a world where we are connected so much more because of the internet. And yes. Privacy. Mm -hmm. And password is a way to maintain that privacy. Of course. And if you want to maintain that privacy, your password has to be very well. Not just privacy, but also security of your uh, of your account. Your information. Your of information, your information, yeah. right? Like your PIN for your bank account, <clears throat> which is mine is a one five six one five. What? Is... <laughs> why were you? Oh. Why are you gonna say it here, Joe? Oh, you have to change it too. <sighs> Anyways, <clears throat> those are a way of protecting our information or valuable assets mm -hmm. and stuff, right? Yeah, there you we go. You gotta make it strong and not tell people what our password is. Yes. On, we have to be very careful with our password. Do not tell anyone your password. Yes, and you're or being ironic right now. And don't write down your password like my PIN number 1566. <laughs> He did it again, guys. Yeah, but the thing is, like, you know, <clears throat> like, you want to go to my house, right? Sometimes we have a keypad, right? The <laughs> keypad is 81515. Why, why would you even say that, too? Or some kind of cars. Cars that have the keypad, too, which is 1656, oh, no. which is my password. Joe, you're the the perfect example of not what to do. That's why I have no money in my bank account. Oh, man. <laughs> People keep breaking into my password. Anyways, speaking of password, our tech trivia of the day, a password with the length of eight characters. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. what you see on the screen, small, uh, lowercase z, uh -huh. number seven, uppercase s, number six, number nine, lowercase s, the at sign, and number nine, that's eight characters, could be cracked using a, uh, uh, what do you call this, a password cracking program in nine years. Oh, you're telling me, because this is a password I use on my <coughs> Netflix account. So it would take nine years for someone to crack this password. Well, I wouldn't suggest this password. It's just an example, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's why when you make password, right? You just want all letters. Well, yeah, exactly. The method, the method is called uh, dictionary attack. Yes. So they use dictionary, they use every single word in a dictionary, right? And just plug it into it. Like super fast. Exactly. It, it, it may be annoying at first, or it may be inconvenient at first, because like, like I said, you know, as uh, us humans, right. uh, since we were having password ever since the computer started, right. you know, the computer era started, we're trying to make a sense of it so we won't forget it. Right. 
you know? Yeah, so for me, right, uh, like when you talk about like a password, right, it's kind of like a door with a lock. Yeah. And, and the key it, has a specific amount of teeth that is your password you can put in. Exactly. And these programs that these uh, hackers and people make, right, mm -hmm. is brute force. Mm -hmm. You're just putting a bunch of passwords to see what hits, right? Exactly. It's like basically trying to kick down the door. Yeah. You're not mm -hmm. opening the lock, you're breaking down well, the door. Well, I wouldn't say like breaking the door, but uh, I would say whoever's uh, trying to intrude yes. on that door, on that lock, they try to make it's got their plenty own keys. of keys. Yes. And then it's exactly. just like, will this fit? Will this fit? The next one. But it's pretty much the same concept in a computer, but of course it's a computer. Mm. So the process is a uh, hundred right. times faster, you know. But having this kind of complicated password right here, for it example. Yeah, and by the way, don't use this anymore <laughs> because uh, it's just an example, okay? You won't use my Netflix account, <laughs> this is my password just in case. I just want to show you guys how, how complicated it should be no, or right. how uh, uh, random right. it should be. For you know, for for password to be more safe. So I'll tell you something cool. For me, I don't know any of my passwords, but I know my password. What? I know it's so weird. How does what? I don't understand. That's all I can tell you. Okay. All right. I like when it comes to my phone, right? I know my password. But I don't know my password. It's just movement of my hands that I remember. Mm, okay. I see. You okay. 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 Now I understand what you're saying. You don't know it exactly. Yeah but you know how to unlock it right it's more of a muscle memory exactly there we go and the other thing i want to, want to warn you guys when you make password right, make sure capital letters lowercase numbers some numbers some symbols exclamation points if, ampersand all that stuff exactly if if uh the website or uh, whatever online uh you have a site would require you you gotta follow it you know if you say at least i know some people uh especially my parents whenever right. they uh create an account to a, a website, for example, uh -huh. and then it's going to ask for, uh, oh, they're going to put their password, but they're not going to read the requirements. No, no, no. And then it's not going to so, accept it. Working? And then they're going to say, yeah, well, why do why I have, I, I know, <laughs> I like, well, you have to follow the instruction. And then when they see, I have to put a special character, oh, this is, this is, uh, uh, what do you call it? This is too much. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's what they're going to be thinking. But I told them, there's a reason why they're doing that. So it's harder for people to crack it. Exactly, Wait, yeah. So another thing I need to tell you guys is, do not write your password down on paper to store it. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't don't tell anyone your password, that's obvious. Uh, uh huh. And what's the other thing? The other thing is, um, don't tell your password. Wait, keep talking, I, I, I just had it. That's it's a, it's a very, okay. very important thing. I'm, I'm, oh yeah, don't use I'm the gonna same password. Yeah, yeah, that, yes, that, that's the thing. Don't use the same password. You have multiple accounts, don't use the same password because if they find out one password, right, they, they would start with that. Exactly. And then uh, the chances of your other accounts to be uh, compromised don't is higher. Don't use birthdays. Don't use your birthdays. Don't mm. use your favorite things. Common things that a person can uh, can like socially engineer from you. Mm -hmm. Like I can ask Jaren, what's your favorite uh, person in the world? He said his wife, and I type in his wife name and his her birthday. I got his bank account. I have all two dollars of JR's bank account. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, those those uh, things that make sense. Yes. Um, they, they uh, you know, in these modern technology, they actually put it as a uh, security questions now. Yeah. So you yeah. know, you know how many. So you don't people, have to put it in your password. You know how many people I went through their stuff by just putting password <laughs> one two three. So many. People. Uh, well, yeah. Don't be like Joe where he puts password as password. Does it make, you know. Why are you telling people my password, JR? You just said it a while ago. <laughs> now <laughs> I, mean, I just repeated it. But it's amazing to know that uh, this, uh, these uh, string of characters, random string of characters, uh, can take a brute force, like uh, the most powerful password cracking program. Computer, yes. Computer, yeah. Nine years, six months, and 18 days. It's running nonstop. See, just imagine that. Password, yeah. Imagine that. If you got, if you have like a very basic password, uh, very comprehensible, Seconds. it's Minutes. yeah, it's not even gonna last nine years, yeah. you know. Yeah. And here's a here's another amazing thing. Uh, if we go back in time with the technology in 1990, right? This kind of same password uh, with the technology uh, back in 1990 for a cra uh, password cracking software. Back then. The back, then. back then. How yeah. long will it take to crack it? 6,495 years. Well, I'm not going to live that long to even Exactly, care. right? <laughs> but just look at the difference between 1990 to up until now. So that's what I mean. Technology is advancing and they're just faster and faster cracking passwords. Exactly. Right? So you have to make your password more complex. There you go. Um, I slightly disagree on Joe when uh, when he said about not writing your password in a piece of paper. But if, if something this complicated, you don't want to risk uh, forgetting it. So I would say 
it's okay for I mean, at least for me i would write it on a piece of paper but i keep it in my wallet right away or you don't write <clears throat> password as this oh no you just do it like you know like write a story and highlight just capitalize oh something. wow now you're uh, what do you call that the uh, encrypting you're encrypting your you're, own you're encrypting your password. <laughs> it's so like don't... what's your password you get my book it's so, yeah. <laughs> Jared, don't take a note paper and write my password and put your password one by one. Of course, don't yeah. Yeah. Try to be more sneaky. Yes. Creative mm -hmm. ways to protect. Or not to yeah. Try not to be obvious about this. Exactly. Making obvious. Sure that, be too obvious. Yeah. Because people can tell if that's a password. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's like, what is this random number? Exactly right. <laughs> oh, it's so. a password. Oh. And and if you guys are not comfortable, there's always going to be as, as of now there are some uh, third-party apps. Managers, it's called a password, password manager, manager yeah. where it actually helps you um, log in through websites with the uh, password that you kept <laughs> without even you uh, remembering it. You know, yeah, yeah. so you, all you have to do is remember one password for a lot. But I don't really suggest that it because it's still a good practice for you to. To know your own password. Yes. So. For my phone, I usually use my fingerprint as my password. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So we, we're gonna have to cut off uh, Joe's thumb if we want to access his phone. <laughs> <laughs> so. There's nothing in there. There's no money, and I'm poor. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I your give, shoes I, though. I your give, shoes. I give away. Well, <laughs> if you want to steal my shoes, my house passcode is five three three two. Look, you, get, you, you just press it, and boom, you're in my house, and you take my shoes. Please don't take my shoes. I'm not going to take your <laughs> shoes. I'm not even a shoe guy. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that is it for our uh, episode today. We uh, went about an hour again. Such a good discussion. Star Wars, teachers, firefighters, your password. Be careful with those. Um, I hope you like it. I hope we hope it's you learned something new. Something, yeah. yeah. And of course, as always, don't forget to leave your thoughts about the topics we discussed in the comment section below. Hit that like button. <laughs> ding. <laughs> Ding, ding. and the uh, subscribe button yep. if ever you haven't done it and again thank you guys for staying with us sticking with us for uh, for about a year now we yeah yeah it's amazing. yeah words cannot express our gratitude for you guys sticking with us thank you thank you so much we appreciate it uh we're not the best channel but you know again thank you for always uh sticking with us you know and enjoy your star wars movie for uh, the month if ever enjoy the rest of your day guys see you guys next time see ya